I have had so many people asking me about their setup for home video conferencing, whether using Zoom or Google Hangouts or another tool. So today I thought we'd go through basic setup. They, from the, what you can find around, just kind of cobbling together your own decent video conferencing setup through to the sort of setup that I'm using, which does, I think, pretty darn high quality video conferencing. So setting up your video conferencing to work from home today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And as I record this video, we are in the throes of the COVID-19 shutdown. And so many people now have to start doing video conferencing from home. And many people are using Zoom for video conferencing, but other tools are being used as well. And regardless of which tool you're using, you can do yourself a favor by having a decent setup as far as video conferencing is concerned. Now, I'm gonna go through the basic setup of things that you can just kind of find around your own home, just using your own notebook and maybe your earbuds from your smartphone, all the way through to higher end setups that uh, we use for broadcasting our live streams, but work exceptionally well for video conferencing. So it all really begins with figuring out where you are going to work from. Finding a fairly quiet environment that you can work within because sound is so important. People tend to obsess on what's happening as far as the video is concerned on the video conferences. I guess because it's called video is the first word. But to be honest, it's far more important getting good quality audio. People will, uh, they will be happy to conference with you with if you have poor quality video, as long as your audio is good. But if your audio sucks, it is gonna irritate everybody that has to listen to you. So let's get started. What about a basic setup? So I just went down into the, uh, into the kitchen and imagine that I had to set up a, uh, a conferencing setup and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the basic setup. So beginning with setting up just using your notebook computer, built-in webcam, and built-in microphone. And this is the result. Okay, I am recording this now using the internal microphone on the notebook, so you can hear the quality of the sound that you're gonna get. And I'm also using the internal camera that's built in right now to the computer. But you can see the angle's low and it's kind of tinny. So let's see if we can step up the value just a little bit by recording using the webcam and using the built-in mic in the webcam. That's gonna be next. So well, that's the baseline quality that we're gonna get. What I did next is I plugged in my old webcam. This is the Logitech C920, which is a very legendary webcam. But if you take a look here in this webcam, you'll notice that it has speakers on either side, or excuse me, microphones on either side. So it actually has stereo input microphones, which will improve the quality of the audio. Now, one thing to consider is the room that I'm in is fairly quiet and I have control over the audio, at least in this particular setup. If you're gonna be in a noisy environment or an echoey room, the using an area microphone or using an open microphone like this one here might not be the best choice but you'll see a dramatic improvement in the quality of the video, and you'll also, I believe, hear an improvement in the quality of the audio. Okay, next up, I've got the webcam now running from my uh, from the Logitech C920, and I'm also using the built-in microphones that are built into the webcam. That's gonna improve things slightly, but the angle still looks terrible, so let's do this. Let's just increase the height here a little bit by putting some books underneath and see if that picks things up a bit, a little bit, and makes it a little bit more acceptable. That's if you still wanna be using your notebook and you're in a fairly quiet environment. So this is option one. The simplest option is having the webcam, using a area microphone like this, and just elevating a little bit so that it looks a little bit better. From my point of view, that is a dramatic improvement in video conferencing quality. Just because we improve the quality of the sound by going from the built-in microphone in the notebook to the onboard microphone on the webcam. Next level up would be to plug in a headset into that notebook computer, which is really as far as most of us would ever need to go as far as video conferencing. But if you want even better audio, you could then plug in a USB mic if you happen to have one available to you. If you have a Blue Yeti or if you have an ATR or another version of a USB mic, you can consider plugging it in. But make sure that you configure the microphone properly, that it's close to you, uh, that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations for proximity. A lot of people worry about having the microphone in the video shot. I don't think you need to worry about that. Everybody knows that you have a microphone, so why worry about seeing it? Does it bother you seeing my microphone in my shot? No, it doesn't. So don't worry about that. And also, as you start to kind of do more and more video conferencing, 
increasingly, I suspect you will use video less and less. Why? Video takes up bandwidth, and bandwidth is becoming increasingly dear as more people are conferencing from home and there's more stress on our infrastructure. So I think a lot of cases, good protocol will include turning off your video and just audio conferencing and being able to turn on your video when you're actually presenting or using screen sharing technology to help communicate. Two other points about the video before we leave this section. One, by elevating the camera angle, we've got far more appealing picture. Uh, the image of a human face from down below looking up at the angle is not flattering for most of us. If it is flattering for you, congratulations. You have incredible genetics. For most of us, we don't look too good looking up at us. We look far better if the camera is at eye level or slightly above. So elevating the angle really helps the overall quality. The other issue is it's daylight as I recorded that demo and the and the, we had big windows facing towards me. So I was getting lots of natural light. The quality of natural light on your face is going to improve the quality of your video dramatically. So light is always going to be an issue. Next up, I wanna to talk to you about maybe considering setting up your video conferencing setup and not using your computer, but instead using your tablet or your smartphone as your video conferencing interface. Now, often we think that we have to be using our computer for any sort of a Zoom call, but you can actually, or video conferencing call for that matter, but actually I think a way that we should really consider is using our smartphone. There are terrific apps. Uh, for instance, Zoom has a terrific app on your smartphone. And overall, the camera on your smartphone and the mic on your smartphone are superior to anything that we're gonna get as far as a webcam goes. So think about doing this, having this sort of a setup. There are a whole bunch of little tripods, just like this one here. Take a look at this one, this is so cool. We just open it out like this, pop it open, and we can put our phone into this tripod and we can use it now as a video conferencing camera, just like this, or better yet, we can plug our headset into it and get even higher quality out of it. Once again, we can take it, oh, gotta put it in the right side there. There it is. Once again, we can take this and we can elevate the height if we choose to, just using something like this. We can elevate the height up to there and make it look that much better as far as we're concerned. And the beauty of doing this is it then eliminates the need for us to have to be using our computer. So it frees our computer up for kind of parallel working while you're video conferencing, as long as you are concentrating on both tasks at the same time. But using your smartphone with any one of a whole bunch of different types of tripods that you can set it up on top of, uh, you can even set up your iPad. If you choose to use your iPad, there are brackets like this that will hold the iPad. Lots of different options as far as doing your video conferencing beyond just using your computer and a webcam. So you could consider having this kind of a setup here where I'm now on my smartphone. I am able to video conference from here and still I have access to my computer should I need to be doing other work. But the quality of the microphone that we're dealing with on the smartphone, being able to use our headset or even just using the mic in the smartphone itself, vast improvement. I have to say, I really like the idea of using our smartphones and tablets to participate in video conferencing calls, freeing up our computer for other work and giving us a higher quality experience. And the beauty is if you're using Zoom for these conferences, the Zoom app on both Android and iOS is really well designed. So as a participant, not necessarily as a host, but as a participant, it is a joy to use. And I think that you will benefit if you choose that. I know you're wondering about my personal setup here, so let me just quickly run through that. I use the Logitech Brio, which is their HD, their, their higher quality, high definition camera. Uh, a little bit more expensive, a little bit higher quality. My audio setup though is really kick-ass. I use a broadcast, a studio broadcast quality microphone, which is the Electrovoice RE20. It's an XLR mic, it has to go through an audio interface. I used to use this old Behringer, this old Behringer mixer, but just recently I purchased the Rode Roadcaster Pro, which I am experimenting with and using and getting my head around. I'm really liking it. But this audio setup to, for video conferencing is really overkill. You're going to get really good quality out of it. A USB mic or even your headset mic is going to be perfectly acceptable for 90% of video calls. I hope that I've put your mind at ease and that you now recognize that your existing hardware that you have in place in your home is probably going to be sufficient 
for you to participate in video conferencing, at least for the short term. You won't be missing out on any aspect of it with the gear that you already have in place. And if you have more options, well, it's, it's always nice to have some better tools to work with. But for the most part, our basic setup is going to work just fine. And I also hope that you found this video useful. And as I say, it's put your mind at ease and maybe helped you transition a little bit if you are spending more time on video conferencing as our work uh, environment shifts while we combat this virus on a worldwide basis. And I imagine once we come out on the other side of the COVID-19 epidemic, that work will shift, that our work habits will shift slightly as more people are comfortable with the concept of video conferencing. If you have found this video useful, I would appreciate a thumbs up and for you to share it with others who might find it valuable. I look forward to your comments and questions. I read each and every one and respond to as many as I can. Also, check out our other videos. We've got a whole series of videos on video conferencing as so many of us are now focused on that as a big part of our work life. So there will be links below as well as at the end of this video to our other videos on the entire concept of video conferencing. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.